The thumb spiker is a circular plaster used to immobilize the thumb. In this presentation, the application of the thumb spiker will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to understand the correct application of the thumb spiker. The thumb spiker is indicated for first metacarpal base fractures, in other words, Bennett's fracture, first metacarpal shaft fractures, proximal and distal phalanx fractures, and injuries to the collateral ligaments of the thumb. This illustration shows a typical Bennett's fracture with displacement. To apply the thumb spica, the following materials are needed. A stockinette or tubular gauze bandage. Cotton wool will be used as undercast padding. Scissors. Plaster of Paris bandage which is available in rolls of varying widths. And water, or another wetting agent. The water should be tepid or lukewarm with an ideal temperature of between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It should be noted that colder water or a bandage that is wetter will allow for an increased working time, while warmer water or a bandage that is drier reduces the working time. The patient should be seated next to a table or trolley, with the elbow at the edge of the table to allow full access to the forearm and wrist. The distal border is located no lower than the distal palmar crease, so that the patient is still able to flex the MP joints to 90 degrees. The proximal border lies about two fingers distal to the crease of the elbow, to allow continued flexion of the elbow. The thumb, up to the nail, is included in the cast. The patient's hand is positioned as if holding a glass, giving a slight dorsoflexion of the wrist. The phalanx, metacarpal and radius should remain in line. To begin, a stockinette is applied and cut slightly longer than the final cast will be. A small opening is cut for the thumb. The cotton wool is used for undercast padding, with a slit cut for the first web space. The cotton wool is gently wound around the forearm with a 50% overlap to create a double layer of padding. The cotton wool extends beyond the planned edge of the cast so that when the end of the stockinette is folded down, the cast will be padded. An additional piece of cotton wool is cut from the roll and placed over the thumb, as shown here. This material will also protect the styloid of the radius and the base of the first metacarpal from pressure points. A length of plaster bandage is torn off and folded over to form a slab. The slab is wettened and placed over and around the thumb. The application of the bandage begins at the wrist. The bandage is then passed through the web space, where it's gathered together. It goes over the palm of the hand to the base of the thumb and around the wrist. This procedure is repeated.
The bandage is then gently rolled on towards the elbow, giving an overlap of 50%. A slight amount of cotton wool at the ends of the cast remains uncovered. The stockinette is now folded over the cast at both ends. A second plaster bandage is applied, beginning where the first bandage ended, to ensure a uniform thickness of the cast and secure the loose ends of the stockinette. The full width of the bandage rolled on around the thumb forms a V at the base of the thumb. This step is repeated. Although there is no bundle of plaster at the base of the thumb, it has been sufficiently immobilized. The plaster bandage is then passed through the first web space, around the wrist, and towards the elbow. The cast is molded by gripping the thumb and wrist with one hand, as shown here. The second hand applies counter-pressure at the ulna. Care should be taken not to push the thumb into hyperextension. The actual molding occurs in the palm of the hand and the base of the metacarpal. The correct positioning of the thumb is checked by asking the patient to hold a pencil or similar object. The application of the thumb spica is now complete. 